One Piece Punk Hazard Arc Review Part 6, Episodes 612 through 617. This examination covers those six episodes that I watched over the past three I'm watchings. Therefore, it's just going to be talking points and no plot summary. So just pretend as though I finish telling you what happened and we get to the part where I just say all in all. I guess what I have to say is meh. I mean, I guess I enjoyed the Zoro fight and the Smoker fight, but I just feel like on the whole it all could have been a lot better. The Punk Hazard arc started out so strong, so I couldn't even stop watching, but ever since the introduction of Shinokuni, it's kind of gone a bit downhill. They run through a door and Shinokuni leaks in, and then they run through another door, and then Shinokuni leaks in again, and so on, and repeat and repeat and repeat. But, okay, so this video is going to be noticeably short because there's no plot summary and no awards, so let's just get into the talking points. There were a few episodes in there that were dedicated to minor character development and revelations. Specifically, I'm talking about Mocha and Brownbeard, whose struggles kind of mirrored one another. Both of them used to love and trust Caesar as part of their own separate groups, but then both of them realized that Caesar was evil after learning some harsh truths. And then, because everyone else in their groups wouldn't or couldn't hear their plight, they turned on them. Above all else, Caesar is a villain of deception and manipulation. He doesn't get his hands dirty by physically fighting his enemies, and he chooses to play mind games with his henchmen in lieu of actually doing anything himself. Caesar injected Brownbeard with a muscle relaxant so he wouldn't be able to speak and tell his comrades about how he's evil. And then he makes Brownbeard thrash around so his own men will shoot and kill him. I think it probably would have been a lot easier for Caesar to just kill him himself by injecting him with some kind of poison. But now Caesar is infused with the power of Shinokuni, blatantly attacking his own men, killing them, and announcing his dastardly plans. In the next eight episodes, perhaps we can expect a shift in Caesar's behavior to a place where he's actually doing something on his own, maybe. Now obviously that right there is very important, the betrayal of friends, and the role of this arc's baddie and all that. However, I sensed that the reason you guys wanted me to watch these episodes were reasons that have nothing to do with Caesar. The first reason was probably that Zoro and Monet battle. I think we learned something about Zoro that we didn't know about him before, although we suspected it, which is that he won't cut women. Although he insists otherwise, of course. Now, I suppose that was something that was kind of just a given, but you have to give it to the Shigi when she pointed out that it was a bit condescending towards her as a swordsman. Woman. To be fair, Zoro did argue that he would cut women, just not women who happened to look exactly like his childhood friend. However, he failed to prove this when he did not cut Monet. Although we did learn something else about him, that he has the power to paralyze people with fear. But maybe it's also the fact that Zoro's never necessarily met a woman who perhaps deserves for him to go all out against them. And Tashiki's a good swordsman and all that, but in comparison to Zoro, she's not much to write home about. Zoro has always had confidence, but it's always been a kind of quiet confidence, though we see that changing to something more blatant. I think this can be both a good thing and a bad thing, dependent on his behavior. But I do not find the revelation that Zoro will not cut women as particularly surprising. The other thing that I pretty sure you guys wanted me to watch was the Law and Smoker vs. Virgo fight. Though I can't say much of that shocked me either. Smoker is not someone who enjoys being indebted to anyone, and I imagined that he would go out of his way to help Law get his heart back. Although it was a decision that directly benefited him because he could plainly see that he wasn't strong enough to take on Virgo on his own. Still, it was smart of him to do it, because then he and Law could take on Virgo together, although it was a bit of overkill to cut the entire building in half. I did find it kind of strange that Law did not deliver the final blow to kill Virgo for realsies, considering Virgo is out to kill him. I know it's One Piece and people don't generally die, but still. Considering everything we know about Law to this point, it feels like it would have made sense for him to kill Virgo. But now maybe Law will feel like he has an obligation to help Smoker get his heart back. After all, he's the one who caused it to go missing in the first place. I'm just waiting for Smoker to win and come out on top of something, because he just keeps losing. 
and becoming the butt of everyone's joke, especially after that whole switching bodies with Toshigi thing. Actually, if you look back on Smoker's track record from his introduction in the Logtown arc up until now, he's always been losing or falling for traps. And yet he manages to remain cool all throughout. And so now there are just a few things to address. No Flamingo is getting Caesar to make devil fruits so he can sell them. But Law said that this is all gonna swing around and mess up things for a Yonko, which is probably the one who's buying the fruits. Also, Sanji is getting back into the Mr. Prince groove. Not completely, but one step at a time. He very much under the radar made best friends with the G5 guys and has been leading them around tying up all the loose ends. After a rather poor showing from Sanji, from Thriller Bark all the way up to Fishman Island, I'm glad that he's kind of turning around and going back to the things that made him so cool in the first place. And finally, all of those children vowing to go out to sea together when they turned 20 was very reminiscent of the whole Luffy, Ace, and Sabo deal to go out to sea when they turned 17. It's looking very grim for the kids, even though they've come back to their senses by now. It's very dark to show us all of these innocent kids because we always know in the back of our minds that they're gonna die young. It's kind of a tragic buzzkill. Well, let's just end this review with a couple of predictions. I've been very clear about what I imagine is gonna happen with Law and what is gonna make the crew end up going to dress Rosa in order to help him with the Doflamingo issue. I think that the Yonko that we're going to be dealing with is Kaido because we don't really know anything about him yet or Big Mom because of that whole I'm gonna fight you for Fishman Island thing. But as far as short-term things are concerned, I think that Luffy is going to kick Caesar's ass because he seems like he's in the position to do that right now. And my next One Piece video will be an examination of the next five episodes, episodes 618 to 622. And that only leaves us with three episodes left of the Punk Hazard arc, which will be a triple feature I'm watching. I'm torn between being thrilled about catching up with One Piece finally after two and a half years, and also kind of devastated. I honestly didn't think I was going to get this far. And I want to thank you guys for coming along for the ride. So I'll see you next time for part seven of the Punk Hazard arc. Bye! Tashiki's a good swordswoman, but in comparison to Zoro, she's not so good. Hello? Ima Uyashogako no Yimasuka? Yada! Hi. Ego de. Ego de. Oh, okay. Ego de. We will speak English. <laughs> Two or three o'clock. Sanji. Niji. Gurai. Hi. Ha. Motoshi kagumi atta. Ah. Ah, I forgot to bring the textbook. Ah, uh, so jikai, jikai, kyokasho, skaimas. Oh, see you later. Bye bye. <laughs>